The Halloween season is upon us, so we've gathered six developers to create a horror game. But there's a twist. Can I ask you something? No communication between the developers is allowed. Each dev gets a handful of hours before passing on the project. So without further ado, let's jump straight into it with the master of horror himself, Mizizizis. My idea was to make a survival horror game that's a zero gravity top down shooter where you push off walls to navigate around a broken spaceship. I got started by making a minimalistic tile set that I tinted and layered in engine to create the spaceship environment. Then I made the movement system where you can click to push off walls towards your mouse cursor. I made some art for the player character and used a basic IK script to make your arm grab onto the nearest wall when you're not moving. I also reused the player art to make some zombie enemies that float around and attack you if you get too close, and added basic shooting mechanics and simple blood splatter effects. But I didn't have time for hit effects for bullets hitting the walls, so I just used a circle as a placeholder. Finally, I made a few levels and a tutorial, and then added a main menu and an intro story, which I like to do as an easy way to add some immersion to my jam games. Before moving on to the next developer, we're super excited to announce we collaborated with Mizizizis himself to create a complete horror course. This is a massive free update to the game of Rocket, and will teach you horror game design principles, how to code relentless monsters, build claustrophobic levels, add bone-chilling atmospheres, so much more. Mizizizis has created dozens of horror games, most notably Rock Flesh and Endoparasitic, and is now revealing his secret development process in this new course. You gain access to it when you purchase our program Game of Rockets, and we're gifting the community with a 25% off coupon, Rocket Horror, up until the 2nd of November. So now is your chance to really dive deep into the creative world of horror. We also recorded a great interview with Miz, which you can listen to with the link in the description completely for free. And with that said, let's move on to the next developer. Hey, I'm Iridus. I work on Hav, a game where you have to control two characters at once. Wishlist have on Steam and check out the devlogs on our YouTube channel. I really liked how easy it was to get straight into the action, but the gameplay really liked some additional stuff. Something that would make it scarier, especially since it's a spooked over now. So the first thing that I did was adjust the game's atmosphere and make everything way darker and more unpredictable. Then I worked on implementing 2D shadows for different light sources. I tried to place all of the shadows by hand, but it felt like a very tedious process, since the tile maps in this game were quite huge. Anyway, I went to my good old friend Google to ask him for help. After searching for a while, I found this neat solution in the GitHub. Don't mind if I do? With the freshly written code, I was able to mark different tile map objects as walls and automatically generate shadows on top of them. I saved a whole bunch of time without having to mark most of the shadows manually. I wanted to make the enemies react to the player whenever the player enters a light source. If the player enters any light, the enemies will move toward the player, meaning that the player will be left with two choices. Run away from the light so that the enemies loses track of you or kill everything in sight. So to implement the idea, I first made a simple trigger that detects whenever the player enters a light. Then I needed a pathfinding algorithm for the enemies. I added the 2D Namesh Navigator, combined it with Unity's Namesh package and baked some areas where the enemies will be able to walk in, meaning that the enemies will be smart enough to avoid the walls. Nice. Of course, there were multiple more things to fix to be properly finished with the enemy AI. I created 4 states for the enemy AI. Idle state where enemies are just standing still. Attacking state when enemies are moving toward the player if the player is close enough and is inside the light source. Retreating state where enemies are walking back to their spawn location. And a gunshot sound state where enemies are moving toward the closest gunshot sound. I was working on the AI for like 5 hours straight and before I knew it I was almost out of time. So I spent a few more moments on adding a gunshot light and player push off speed multiplier so that the player is gradually slowing down and finalized my changes by creating a couple more levels, adjusting the tutorial visuals and placing enemies with different light sources. Just a quick reminder, if you'd like to support me, please check out Ham on Steam and my Moolive Studio YouTube channel. Thanks! Hey, I'm Aya!
I typically work on lighthearted games on my YouTube channel, but I'm starting my villain arc, so I'm excited to dig in. Oh, and uh, Dual Wielded is here for some reason. Yeah, I'm here too. I also don't know why. For some reason, we were asked to work on this one together. I hardly know the guy, but all right, I guess this means we should be able to get double the work done before passing on the project, so... Take it away, Aya. The game reminded me a lot of Mrs.'s game, Endoparasitic, and a previous no communication game I actually made art for. We wanted to set this game apart from those and felt like the art and gameplay were too far along to make any changes, so we instead focused on the story. Exactly, the lack of stake and context makes going through the levels a little uninteresting and not that scary. For a previous challenge I was in, you might recall, Noob Noob Destroyer, I created an intro cutscene, which I feel like we can do that again. So there's already some minor lore written, which mostly just tells me that Bethusala is a ship. Whether that's a regular ship, a spaceship, a submarine, I wasn't 100% sure. Sure. I do think the idea of a submarine is probably the scariest and I think it's the perfect fit for me to add some cosmic horror to the game. The feeling of the unknown and uncertainty. redo them and tie them into the story better. They should be more puzzle-like and get more challenging as the player progresses. We thought it would be quick to implement a mini game based on the one from Fallout, but I kind of got carried away. I made the puzzles parametric so they'll be different each time. If the player loses, an alarm sounds, a skull displays, and the player is sent back to replay the level. Winning shows this cute smiley face and lets the player proceed. To make things more immersive, I added sounds and some subtle camera movement. As the player gets further into the game, the word selection becomes more violent and a text glitch effect intensifies to communicate that the player is becoming more corrupt. Exactly, because that is what happens in the story. Throughout the levels, you communicate with the captain, who's on the other side of the radio. You're the only one in that room with a remaining I'm so sorry. Can you quiet down? I'm trying to explain something. Whenever a level starts, you get an update from the captain, keeping you up to date on what else is happening on the sub. You only hear the stories though. Not seeing it is pretty scary, huh? See, expecting something to be there, but not actually being able to see it yourself? Now that's pretty scary. At this point, I learned that the game was definitely supposed to take place on a spaceship, because uh, the player is literally in zero gravity. I'm sorry I messed up, uh, I hope you like submarines as well. But at this point in the story, it's pretty obvious that the red lights outside are messing with whatever is happening in the sub. So if I just plant a... The pressure inside keeps rising, it's... the gravity is... I don't know what's going on. And, th you know, the player's movement makes sense again, it's as easy as that. Halfway through the game, there's a second character that gets introduced, which is exactly when the corruption starts. That's cool and all, but I just finished playing through the game and it made zero sense to me. Well, uh, uh, you see, the unknown is scary, like I just mentioned before, so leaving things out intentionally makes it scary. Um... Uh, also, I love Dark Souls. There were some things we wanted to change about the gameplay, mostly because getting to the end was pretty frustrating. You could get softlocked with no ammo, so I added ammo pickups to each level. Fighting enemies was annoying because they all looked the same but had different abilities and health, so I fixed that. It was also pretty hard to know if an enemy was dead or not, so I added a monster groan each time an enemy dies. The scene felt really dark, but I literally added a flashlight in the other no communication game I worked on, so instead, I added some flashing red emergency lights that illuminate areas and also help to guide the player towards the exit. Now I can actually get to the end without rage quitting. This is where the game ends. The player gets completely corrupted by the presence of the red lights outside, whatever they are. And Felix from the diving team is revealed to not really exist at all. Having given the unknown presence what it wants, the player is of no use anymore, and the rest of the crew can be heard over the radio. The red lights succeeded.
Oh, and by the way, I do have a YouTube channel as well. You can check it out after oh, this. this. Don't worry, I put my phone in one of these plastic bags, so it should be fine. Uh, in case you were worried about that. Well, see you later. Hey everybody, I'm Thomas Stewart. I'm a full-time indie dev who makes YouTube videos about the games that I'm releasing and I also talk about the business side of game development, like this video right here where I talk about how my recent game launch went. Now let me start off by saying that when I first opened up this project, I was so impressed with the game. And it was definitely reminiscent of Mrs's game, which I forgot what it's called. Endoparasitic, yeah. I played through it and I was amazed at the amount of polish that was already in the game. And in the existing form of the game, I only found one flaw that I didn't really like, and it was the lighting. The problem was that it was really hard to navigate in the dark. Enemies were hidden and it took a long time to find the exit. So I decided to add flares to the game. And if a player got caught in the midst of darkness and was too afraid to go forward, it would feel like their own fault because they had already used up all of their own flares. I was inspired by Luke Muscat's scuba diving game, where he uses dark environments and glow sticks to help light the path. But instead of dragging them along or simply shining a flashlight, in this game I wanted the player to be able to throw them out in order to light up a small area. That way, the player can send a light ahead without having to go in, and they can even bounce them off of walls. So I made some art for the flare, gave it light components along with a collider, and hooked up the throw mechanic for the player. I also basically duplicated the utility of the ammo pickups in the game so the player can also find additional flares to use throughout a level. And then I made sure to sprinkle those throughout each level. Because we now have two resources to track, ammo and flares, I decided to change how the player HUD worked. Previously it tracked the number of bullets next to the cursor, which was cool, but with keeping track of flares too, it seemed better to keep that information at the edge of the screen, so I made a little UI HUD for those resources. I also had to add a tutorial for the player so that they would know how to use the flares. I think the flares are really fun to use now, and it makes the gameplay more enjoyable, but it's still creepy traversing through each level. And that's it for me. What a super cool game, and I'm really impressed with all of the devs that came before me. So feel free to check out my YouTube channel or my new game on Steam, Tanks But No Tanks. All right, I'll see you in the next one. Happy Halloween, everyone. To be honest, though, this is not my favorite holiday. There's too many scary skeletons and stuff. Oh, um, right. This game was very different than the games that I play and movies that I watch. It was also pretty crazy because when I got the project, it was kind of already done. I was really impressed. There was even a main menu and dabbing. Since it was so polished, I started by just kind of experimenting. I experimented with the underwater theme, uh, with adding more blue, but I decided it was changing the look of the game too much and so I threw it out. I did some other small things like add this parallaxing effect I found from this YouTuber. And I cleaned up the die screen and changed it to spacebar so you can restart quickly if you die. Uh, from this point I didn't really see any glaring flaws so I decided to add a boss. I won't give any spoilers because the game is narrative focused, but near the end there are two characters who are fighting about what you should do in a really intense way. So I made the game have multiple endings after that, depending on who you listen to, and one of the endings will lead to the ball. I made the boss have 12 hearts because of what one of the um, earlier devs had said in a voice line, and I also added some post-processing to the level and another hidden cutscene. This itself was really fun to make. This is your editor, stop saying Ball. I added a hinge joint to this arm so he tries to protect his hearts and push you against the wall so his big laser can laserify you. We worked on this game at the exact same time while we were putting the finishing touches on our latest Steam release. It's a monster collecting roguelike JRPG. It's called Monster Path and it just released, so please check it out. Bye bye Oh damn, okay, so there's the cutscene. Okay, cool, some kind of intro. Wow, this is really nice. He doesn't know what's up there. What the he doesn't know what's up That's scary. <laughs> What? <laughs> That's a whole cutscene now. Wow. What? Dang, this is cool. Okay. <laughs> That's awesome. So there's actually even a narrative now. Yo, and the game looks so different. It really has that grim atmosphere. Space for flare. Oh, that is cool. Okay, so I can grab these. That is a cool addition. I love the lighting. Okay. What is this? Is this a puzzle of some sort? What is this? What am I trying to do? Yeah, you better. This is the first puzzle. It's not. 
S. Or, yeah, that Save. one. Save. Yes, Save. let's go. <laughs> All right, what? How do I solve this? Okay, so there's... Okay, this is really... I don't know. <laughs> I wouldn't mind a tutorial for that. Maybe I have to click on... Oh, maybe a door? Lock? Oh. Now that there's flares, I wish it was darker. Yeah, the flares, I, I don't really use them. Uh, yeah. Oh, what the oh, hell? Oh, maybe you should use some. <laughs> okay, so the enemies are still the same. Man, I, I love the ambience. It's so good. Also, there's the problem. My spacebar still doesn't work, and you throw them with space. <laughs> Quick clip of me messing up previous game when <laughs> my spacebar didn't work. It's crazy you don't have a new keyboard yet. Okay, so the enemies are my crewmates. I got it. So that's why they, they look the same. Ooh, cool story. Okay, there's a choice now. I mean, I know what happens when I draw this sign, right? Yeah. Let's do it. Oh. That's so cool. The portraits and the story and voiceover. Uh, that really was the most, like, I think, important element for this was to have a good story. Do you want to play again to see what the other choice was? All right, set up my speedrun timer. Let's go. Here we go. This is Captain Murphy speaking. That's Whoa, <laughs> this is a terrible oh, start to a speedrun. Horrible start. Sacrifice yourself or draw. let's draw the sign. Oh, that's cool. Is this a boss room or something? I think I have to hit these. Yeah, okay. So I have to destroy all the reds, the red thingies. 110. Come on, liars. Uh, it's got to be organ. Boom. Whoa! In the speedrun oh, community, go. we call it an instant win. A speed gas, we call that. <laughs> speed gas. Speed gas, that's what we call that in the speedrun community for this game, for Methuselah. <laughs> oh, it's not over yet. Damn, what is it? What is this? Okay, it's moving. Boom. Oh! Boom. Hold the rick. That's it. 213. Oh, there's gotta be a speedrun.com leaderboards for this. <laughs> we gotta make it happen. Yeah. 213 initial initial run. Technically speaking, that, sh that is definitely a world record, right? Oh, that was it. Okay, that was easy. One more thingy. No, no, no. Okay. I got him. What? Whoa. Wait, what? Come on! This, you can't finish the speedrun! That doesn't. His speedrun doesn't count. How do you kill it? It was it. Let's go! One came back. All right, cool. Man, amazing. I I I I just don't have any words for this. <laughs> like, this is <laughs> this is something else. What? That was actually cool. What? So so glad we did that. Imagine yeah, that was we cool. just left it at that. Yeah, great sound design and everything. I'm really impressed with where that went. I, I I didn't think that it's going to turn out so good. Holy crap! Bravo! Good job, everyone. Uh, Miz, what did you think of, of the final version of the game? Oh yeah, I was not expecting all the, how much like story and cutscenes and all the effects, like that was really impressive. I, I do think the stuff I made that didn't get changed needed to be improved a lot. I think the movement and mechanics that I did were probably the weakest part of it. I agree with Miz's is that I think it could have been a little bit improved because I found myself, depending on the angle that I wanted to jump to, I couldn't move everywhere that I wanted to all the time. But I feel like the movement mechanic really oh. lent a lot to the game because it made you think of the levels as more of a puzzle. It is kind of interesting like if when you dash down a, a long hallway and you're going like into the dark and you don't know what's there that there's like this feeling of tension and, and lack of control that I think makes horror games fun. Exactly. I was going to say the same thing. Okay, dude. All right. <laughs> okay, guys. So how would you expand the game from here? I think maybe I would like uh, seeing like additional enemy types or maybe make them at least somewhat different because uh, right now they looked exactly the same as the player. Maybe there could be like a few different stages as well, like uh, more bosses to fight, uh, like different environments. The, the main thing that stood out to me was like the enemy placement. You know, once you learn it, then you kind of know where everybody is and what to avoid or when to expect an enemy to come around a corner. So it's really feature rich, uh, but I would just maybe add a, a couple more things like maybe even being able to randomly generate levels for replayability value. Yeah, I like that, the randomly generating of levels. I was thinking about maybe not replaying the audio cues when you die, but have it continuously keep playing them so you don't have to keep hearing the same thing. <laughs> 100%, yeah, yeah. But I do think the way the game is now, it's very, speed runnable like there should yeah. be a speedrun.com leaderboards for this yeah i'm probably gonna have to well, I'll, I'll compete with liam uh, we'll try and do a, a speed run <laughs> it has the world record
record right now. Yeah, so. I do currently have the world record, just so you know. Oh uh, yeah, that that was one thing we wanted to talk about was that we could have even changed the boss fight to be the other ending instead of I think there's just a gunshot now. Yeah, I did notice that. I like very much that was like the one thing I was frustrated with. And I knew that it was lacking. So I was I felt really bad. I was like, oh gosh, should I just make one and like not make the choice? But then it was like we were out of time and we had to go. So I was yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's fine. Trust to be fair guys, I didn't even know there was a boss fight. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you should check it out. It's really cool actually. It's sick. Yeah. It is very unique, yeah. Remember that if you also want to learn how to create video games, we teach you how to do so over on the Game Dev Rocket. We'll take you from being complete beginners to becoming game dev pros who can code, design, create game arts, use Unity, and actually sell and earn money from their work. There's a massive horror game update that we've just launched, and you can use the promo code Rocket Horror until the 2nd of November to get 25% discounts off the whole course. So thanks so much for watching, guys. Happy Halloween, and see you real soon. Cheers.